In early 1950s, a Japanese actor becomes the subject of a cruel fate, having his skin and body dissolve into a suit he would wear for a movie. In fact, the suit he was wearing was a Godzilla suit, being involved in the recording of the well-known Godzilla movies. The actor, however, has a secret, a dark, painful secret which makes him hate Americans, feeling as if anyone wanting to work with them is a traitor. Fresh out of war, losing a deadly battle to USA, have two major cities nuked. The actor, in fact, as someone who lost his family in the Hiroshima bombing, developing a severe grudge against all Americans, wanting to see justice served. Being exposed to the heavy radiation of the atomic bomb, he himself starts having his body melted, which starts dissolving inside the suit he wears for his role as the Godzilla, which merges him and blends him together with the suit, making him become inseparable from the suit, becoming a goji. Hired in Toho Studio, the actor becomes notorious as the man in the suit, having a very odd story something that will be the topic of many conversations. The actor, at the time being unknown, would wear the suit most of the time with his colleagues and co-actors never actually seeing his face. The actor goes so far as wearing the suit even during breaks and taking it home, refusing to answer to his actual name, urging his co-actors to call him Goji, essentially the nickname given to the suit. During one fateful day, while doing a shoot, the man in the suit would suddenly stop moving having labored breathing. When people go to check on him, seeing how he doesn't move for a few minutes, they go ahead to check inside the suit, making sure the actor is alright, when they become horrified to find something unexpected inside the suit. The actor's flesh had started growing inside the suit, blending in, dissolving and attaching to the suit. When the people tried to open the pocket where the actor would climb inside the suit, his skin ripped and tore, depicting how he has become part of the suit. Somehow, his body had dissolved and felled inside the suit to the point that he had formed the inside shape, making it impossible for him to get out. Something that didn't seem to bother him, something that seemed he wanted. His intentions of wanting to become this creature are convoluted, but it seems as if something drove him to become as such, something he thought would help him in pursuit of a plan helping himself and possibly his nation even. Years pass and the actor adopts his identity as this cursed creature, with the Toho studio still using him for the upcoming movies, as this was the only suit available, and it seemed that they liked the originality of the actor and what a freak of nature he is. In 1962, with the popularity of a new movie with a giant called King Kong, Japan decides to collaborate with their American counterparts, including King Kong in an upcoming Godzilla movie which doesn't sit very well with the man in the suit. An American cameraman being hired for shoot of this movie reports anonymously about something morbid that happened while shooting the movie. A Japanese fellow by the name of Shoichi Hiros assumes the role of King Kong wearing the suit against Godzilla. The man in the suit develops a strong strong hatred towards him, seeing him as a traitor wearing the King Kong suit, as it is a product of USA, a country which he sees as his enemy, who caused genocide and destruction to his nation, taking the lives of his loved ones, whom he has vowed to avenge, hence why he has adopted the identity of this monstrous being so he can become powerful enough, killing as many he believes to be responsible. The studio personnel would learn about his strong dislike towards Americans as he would roar at them whenever any American would approach him, with them roaring as his vocal cords become damaged as his body blends into the suit, making more animalistic sounds than anything recognizable to humans as words. During one final scene, the American cameraman keeps on recording following the script where Godzilla and King Kong would fall off a cliff while fighting, which ends up badly, not according 
to plan. While in the water, visible struggles can be seen with Godzilla getting out of the water while King Kong doesn't, which in reality shows how the man in the suit drowns Shoichi being the man in the King Kong suit, killing him intentionally as he thought of him being a traitor representing an American monster. Seeing this intentional murder, the cameraman runs through the corridors on the studio, horrified to what he just witnessed, when he notices that he's being chased by the man in the suit, which he takes a photo of using his camera, managing to exit the studio. The first encounter being petrifying, this makes the cameraman very curious to find out what is really going on and who the man in the suit is. He gives the photos that he took to one of his friends who specializes in this sort of field. This friend the cameraman gives the alias Elisa to protect the identity of explains the man in the suit is fusing with the suit due to radiation which exploded him inside the suit, fully merging with the suit and within it. Not just filling the gaps, but injecting into the suit itself, becoming one with it. To the point his bones, his teeth and flesh would form as part of the suit, making the suit's mouth line with sharp teeth, becoming part of him, able to control it, including the tail and even the eyes. Despite the man having his eyes bloodshot, fusing with the suit gives him the ability to use the eyes of the suit which reflect back like an animal when the camera captures a photo of him. The description of this video portrays a different side of the story, being from the man in the suit who explains how he wants to avenge his family who died killing anyone who did that to him, anyone who helped the culprits and anyone who collaborates and works with them even now, remotely associated to them. This means he wants to kill all Americans and anyone who works with them, believing everyone is responsible for the atrocity that happened to his family. This is followed by a tape sent to the cameraman from an unknown source and anonymous sender, who explains that Americans will pay for what they did to the sender and his nation. It further explains all Americans cheered when civilian Japanese lost their loved ones and so much more. The person went out of Hiroshima for a work trip. That's how he survived. But when he returned, he saw his entire family absolutely decimated with his home and city gone. Hence why he has vowed to take revenge for anyone who wronged them and will kill as many Americans as he can. This tape is of course from none other than the man in the suit whose intention of becoming this beastly creature is clarified. That he wants to be powerful enough to kill people he believes to be responsible for the death of his family. The tape came from Toho Studio, yet the tape were shabby and not professional, confirming it was from the man in the suit. The Toho studio then tried to take the man out of the suit, but it seems to be unsuccessful as his skin had become the suit, with his flesh, bones, organs and everything else being fused with it, so it would be impossible to separate the suit from him. In 1964, the man in the suit manages to escape the studio with Toho trying to cover it up labeling it as a meticulous attempt of promoting their new movie, when they remove all other sources of news about the escape of the Goji. One eyewitness reports that seeing this creature was very surreal, being unlike any Godzilla as his skin seemed real yet fake, with his face changing, explaining that the fake suit had become a living skin fusing with the man inside it. This escape was due to how badly the man in the suit was treated in the studio, as an insider spying on the story reports to the American cameraman that the man in the suit was treated like a circus animal, being tested on and put in really terrible conditions, tested against strong winds, dragged around and even forced to wear contacts to cover his bloodshot eyes. The events preceding the escape happened during a shoot of a new movie of Godzilla fighting against a giant moth. The moth this time was a puppet which the man in the suit knew about, being extremely aggressive and violent towards it letting out some steam after being treated so horribly. Unfortunately though, in one of the larva suits, a female actor decides to be in it to make the movements more realistic. Due to extra room within it, she feels more safe. 
The man in the suit, however, not sure if a human is inside, uses his new set of beastly teeth, biting deeply into the suit, ripping the female actor to shreds. Being in the production for the first day, she proudly invites her parents to the shoot. The parents seeing the brutality of the scene and the blood splashing, knowing their daughter is being savagely injured, they go to intervene, but unfortunately for them, the man in the suit being full of adrenaline and anger lashes out and attacks the parents, mauling them to death. In a moment of clarity to what he has done, he runs away, which leads to the events of him being spotted outside by other bystanders. The team in Toho studio go after him, finding him standing still, watching the wilderness and the nature in awe, as if being calmed by it, wanting to be there when he gets captured. As a last resort, the man in the suit vomits a boiling red liquid, as if being his own blood, seemingly evolving into a full-on goji, having radioactive vomit. With the man in the suit sedated and taken back to the studio, they expect to see a crushed individual inside the larva suit. But instead, they see it evolving into a moth monster, revealing that the bite or vomit of the man in the suit is actually radioactive, causing the victims to start melting, fusing into whatever suit that they are in, which gives rise to a new range of creatures, hybrid human monsters. Going back to 1955, the cruel and corrupt Toho studio, having only money in mind, saw the value in the man in the suit, a hurt and scarred man who lost his family, wanting to seek revenge and blindness, which they saw profit in. They made another actor wear another Gojira suit, fighting against the man in the suit, the original Goji which turned out to be a disaster, with the man in the suit biting him severely, causing him to die after letting out screams of agony. After a while, the actor within the suit starts moving, with the personnel of the studio looking inside to see he is also filling the inside of the suit, similarly to the man in the suit and the larva. Therefore, this shows how the man in the suit is capable of turning people into these monstrous creatures through biting them, as if being some sort of infection spread through bite. The doctors examining the man in the suit even explain how this is a surreal incident with it being impossible, not knowing how a human could turn into such a thing to the point that a synthetic suit could become alive, to the point that the human inside could feel it and sustain injury or feel the pain applied to the suit. The greedy and cruel Coho studio then decide to separate the humans from their suits, making a subsequent movie focused on the actual monsters rather than the suits, treating them like anything but human, like abused and mistreated animals. But of course, this would prove to be an impossible task, as they would instead die, not being able to live outside of their new skin. Despite that, it doesn't stop them from trying, which leaves the fate of the new actor in the new Gojira suit undecided. Therefore, despite knowing something terrible happens to people involved with the man in the suit and it would turn them into monsters, they are indifferent, wanting to make profit on their misery. So this leaves me with the question to where the story will go. Will the American cameraman help someone who sees him as his foe? which would somehow change the perspective of a badly hurt Japanese man who lost everything in the Hiroshima bombing. Only time will tell, with more episodes being released. Anyway folks, this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to stay tuned by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host Dar, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.